It's the talk of San Diego. Don, due to technical difficulties beyond our control, the talk of San Diego will be seen in its regularly scheduled time. Okay, then you, oh. oh, hey, sorry about that. You caught me reading a little bit. My name is Cassandra and you are here with the talk of San Diego and I am at the amazing Do It With Icing. Not only do they have a lot of information about how to make some pretty fantastic party cakes, but they also have every accoutrement you might need to make your cakes, your cupcakes, your cookies, look just simple dazzling and to impress your friends. Now today we're gonna meet with Linda Bills, the owner, who's gonna show me a couple of secret things that I can do with chocolate to really just step my culinary skills up a notch. So if you're ready, go ahead and follow me and let's see what sweetness we can get into. Don, the views and opinions of the hosts and the guests of the Talk of San Diego are not the views of the hosts and the guests of the Talk of San Diego. Hey, and we're back. This is Cassandra with the Talk of San Diego. And we just pulled out the chocolate shells that I made a little bit ago. What's the next step with these, Linda? Now you're gonna just pop them out, and all okay. you do is flip them over onto the wax paper. Okay. And tap gently. Oh, see, hello. they come right up. Tap. There you go. Voila. So there's that. Now tap these, same thing. Flip them over, Ooh. and they'll fall right out. Now you don't even have to do that. Just tap the whole tray. Oh, okay. See? Easy. Easy, easy, easy. Now, if they don't come out, mm -hmm. they're not cold enough. Oh, okay. And so you put them back in the freezer a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, this one here is a little bit more delicate because it has the little legs. So instead yes. of flipping it over on the tray, I flip it over into my hand. Okay. Because it's a softer landing. Okay. For it. And then you can flip these out onto All the tray. Right. Flip and tap. There you go. There See? Go. Easy. easy step. Now you do the molds clean and dry. You don't ever put anything in them. Okay. Now you want to let them sit to, to reach room temperature. Mm -hmm. And um, then we're going to do something called luster dust on them, luster which makes dust. them look really shiny. Okay. Now we have some shells that we already made that we're going to luster dust. The magic of cooking television. Some brand new perfectly made shells coming up right here. Right here. Now we also did some marbled ones. And all we did for those is take a little tiny bit of white chocolate, put in the bowl, mm -hmm. put a little bit of chocolate, dark chocolate on top, and then swirl it together just like you would do in a marble cake. Okay. So, so you want to stir it, you just little swirl? Right, just little swirls. Okay. And then spoon it into the molds. Okay. So um, you want to spoon the good part first, and then it kind of mixes together and makes kind of a beigey color. Mm -hmm. And you kind of put that on the back. Oh, you know, okay. when you go back to refill them. Oh, yeah. Then the beigey color tends to be more on the back. On the back side, okay. But they look beautiful on the front. They're yeah, gorgeous. Okay, now we have um, the luster dust, and I'm gonna need one more brush. Now the hardest part about doing this is opening it. So if you have one of these little beer openers, you can use that to open it gently. You don't wanna crack the top. But they're, it's such a fine dust that they have these great containers, mm -hmm. but they're really hard to open. Oh, it's too great. Yeah, so when you try to do this by hand, almost impossible sometimes. So you can use a regular um, can opener, mm -hmm. um, but these little ones work a little bit better on them. So we're just going to use two colors, my two favorite colors for shells. And this one is Super Pearl, and this one is uh, Champagne. Now I need a whiter one. Pearl and Champagne. Yeah. Um, you want to get a soft brush, you can get a brush anywhere. Mm -hmm. This is a red sable brush, but um, it doesn't have to be a food safe brush, you'll never find one. Just a regular brush, but you don't use it for anything perfect. Okay. Um, except chocolate. Mm -hmm. So the Super Pearl, you take it over here, you dip the brush in here, get some of the dust, and dust it off into the lid so you don't waste it, so you don't have too much. And then okay. you just brush it on here. Oh, see, I still have too much. So see how shiny? Dabby. Yeah, so... Oh, how pretty. The stuff that's on here, we can continue with here. It's very pretty. So you can pick this up. And you can put it on the marbled ones as well. Okay. Just don't do these two. Okay. Or these four. Right, I'll here. save those for the maestro. So just brush it on. You can use a little more than that, but see, you got a really pretty shine on that already. There that's you go. gorgeous. Perfect. But brush it all off so it's thin. Okay. You know. And then... Yeah, see here? I'm gonna be yeah, Go ahead. Okay. Just do that. You're doing really good. Thank you. That just adds a little. It's just like, I call it eyeshadow it. for chocolate. I was just, just thinking like putting that. on eyeshadow. 
See, I feel like. So this one here is perfect. This one has a little bit too much dust. Okay. So just go back and dust it off. Okay. You know, just braid to use to dust it. Okay. Okay? Because that actually brings the shine out a little bit more. Very nice. Just make it his little sheen to yeah, it. Yeah, see how pretty that is? I did a wedding cake once and took it to a hotel and the guy said, you put plastic shells on there? I said, no, they're chocolate. And he goes, no, they're plastic because they were all shiny like this. Oh, yeah. And I said, here, eat one. And he did. And he was like, I can't believe it. That's amazing. It's a compliment. I was like, but you've lived in San Diego. And he said he'd worked at this place that was right on the ocean mm -hmm. for 13 years. And I was like, you've never seen chocolate shells? I can't believe it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See how beautiful that one is? That's how much shinier pretty. it is compared to these? Yes. But it just really pops out the thing, the color. It does fish on the marbled ones. Right. And then um, the other color I like mm -hmm. to use is champagne. And it's a little bit pinky, but it looks better on like this one, like a sand, do sand dollar or the starfish. Oh, pretty. Because they are more, mm -hmm. you know, beigey colored in real life. Yes. So same thing with this one. You just have to dust the whole thing. Very and pretty. It looks more realistic, I think, than just a super pearl. Oh, it but does. sometimes people just want all super pearl, and that's mm -hmm. what I do. Sometimes they don't care, so I generally use a little bit of champagne on mm -hmm. these because I think it just gives a little bit more interest when they're together. Yeah, that looks very nice together. So, what you do? You okay. haven't finished these. You got to keep okay. working, girl. Okay. <laughs> just put me to work. Yeah. So, uh, let's see. We haven't done this one. We did this one. Or did we do that one? I don't think we did. Okay. So you need to do those, and then these with the champagne. Okay. These we'll four over here with the champagne. Okay. Okay. Tap. Move this down a little bit so you firm. Here's the lid. To, to oh, thank you. Now, see, we have a little bit of a foot on this one, mm -hmm. so we could cut, take a knife and cut that off, or we could just eat it so nobody sees it. <laughs> Sacrifice. So that if one. you don't want to eat them, because you know, obviously, we're kidding about eating them all. But if you don't want to eat it, you can just, before you dust it, you can just take that, throw it back into the hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. It'll melt itself, and then you make another one. Okay. So they're so quick and easy, it's not a big deal. That's good. That's good. I'll do this one. So actually, let me show you. Here's the difference between the, sh the Super Pearl mm -hmm. and the Champagne. It's just a little more natural color, I think. Yeah, adds a different on element. On certain shells. So it adds a little bit of interest. That's perfect. Great job. Thank you. you. Got this down quickly. <laughs> so what else can you use this luster dust on? You can use it on fondant. Mm -hmm. You can use it on buttercream after it's crusted. Okay. You can use it on cookies if you're doing royal icing cookies. Mm -hmm. And you can also mix it with alcohol to make a darker color. So okay. you can use gin, vodka, tequila, or lemon extract. It has to be a clear liquid. Okay. Obviously, you're not going to use rum to do it. I can unless you have find white rum. One or all of those in my house. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't and you're worried about it, it evaporates off, so there's no real alcohol left on it. Shoot. But um, if you're worried about it, you're doing it for kids. You can use lemon extract. Okay. Good to know. This, uh, it basically has to have 80% alcohol mm -hmm. because then you mix it together. It makes a darker color, like a paint, and then. Um, Just, Sorry, my mind went completely blank. So it's a dark color, so just make it more yeah. vibrant? Yes. Now, are you still able to dust it on, or would that be more painting it on then? You paint it on. Then. Okay. The trouble is, people have trouble, you know, figuring out how much, and there's no real um, formula for it. You just have to play with it. How about if you give me some gold, please? Gold dust, and we'll put the shelves with the gold dust, just so you can see. Okay. And generally for painting, I use a smaller brush, but mm -hmm. it's still very soft. Okay. Very soft like makeup brushes. Okay. But don't use your makeup brushes. Please. Oh no, those are sacred. <laughs> Unless you haven't ever used them. Before. Okay, so this is gold. So we're going to get our shell over here. This one. Beautifying these shells. This is one of the shells that you made. That our trusty assistant Sarah has taken out for us. And so what you do is you just dip your brush in the alcohol and then um, dip it in the dust, pick up some dust, and then I use the lid as my palette. Okay. Now see, it's not liquidy enough, so I've got to go back and get more liquid. Okay. But see, just a touch is all you need. And then you're just going to paint your shell. Put it down here so I can reach it. 
and you could just paint lines if you wanted to. Oh, that's so vibrant. But see how much brighter it is? Yes. Or you can paint the whole shelf. Now, if you're painting and it's not sticking, mm -hmm. then it has too much alcohol, so you need to go back and pick up more of the dust. Okay, so then as the alcohol evaporates, it just Yeah, it evaporates off color. right away and leaves the color. You can pick it up and it won't. Now, see, that's not sticking very well because mm -hmm. I don't have enough dust. So go back and add a little bit more dust. That's beautiful. And then paint it on. So if you're doing something for a 50th anniversary or something where the theme is all gold, you can make everything gold. That's the way to do it. It just takes a little bit more time to do painting. How many different colors of this Lester Dust do you have in, at the store? Probably about 60. 60 different colors? Yeah. Oh, There's wow. actually four different kinds, or five different kinds. There's um, petal dust, which has no shine. Mm -hmm. And they generally use that for making the gum paste flowers, the lifelike flowers. Okay. Because life flowers don't have shine. So they use the petal dust for that. There's the luster dust that we're using here that's shiny. There's pearl dust, that's all the colors are pearlized. And then there's disco dust, which looks like disco dust. glitter. Oh, and it's edible? Yes, it is edible. I'm going to have to disco dust we get in my life. Try one with disco dust. Um, when I make, I make a lot of gifts for Christmas, mm -hmm. and I always dust the chocolates. And if I'm doing like hand dip chocolates, which yes. we teach here, um, I paint each flavor a different color. Oh, so people, so that know, people know what they're getting. What they're getting. Now here's some disco dust. This is rainbow, which is the most popular color because it's beautiful. Goodness, it's gorgeous. And um, let's see, I'm gonna move this over here. Voila. We take the same thing, a little bit of alcohol, take the dust, make it into a little paint. This is a little bit dicier to use, a little bit more trouble, and then paint it on the shell. Oh, and wow. It looks like glitter. It's hard to believe that that's totally edible. Yep. It's not considered edible, it's considered non-toxic. Okay. But you're eating such a teeny little bit, it's not going to hurt you. The FDA won't approve it as edible mm -hmm. because it doesn't absorb in your body. Anything that they consider edible has to be absorbed in your body. Okay. This just goes through your body. But it's safe it's not to gonna hurt consume. You. Yeah. yeah. That's beautiful. So, see, it's very sparkly. Wow. It's like a little girl's dream right there. Yes. <laughs> you can also take this and just sprinkle it on a cake mm -hmm. so it gives you that glitter, mm -hmm. you know, spark. Okay, you did fabulous. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to um, put these all on a nice tray and come back and see how great they look. Perfect. So while we arrange our edible artwork, uh, this is Cassandra with the Talk of San Diego. Don, you're watching the Talk of San Diego. Guaranteed no angry housewives. This is Cassandra with the Talk of San Diego, and we're back with Linda, and we're on one of my favorite subjects, champagne. But we're gonna do this little twist. We're making champagne suckers. So what's the first step in this? So it's easy, and now that you're a pro, I'm not even gonna show you how to do it. Oh gosh. I'm just gonna tell you. So you're gonna take the spoon and just okay. fill the mold just like you did the shelf. Okay. Now again, you could put it in a bag, but I don't wanna have to bother with the bag or Quick cleaning it. Quick and a, easy. Uh, Squeeze bottle. But you certainly can do that if you're into cleaning the dishes. <laughs> I'm not. I like making messes in the kitchen. I do not like cleaning them up. So you're going to have to force a little bit of chocolate into that stem and the base down there. So I put a little bit more in here and then push it, push it down. Squish it down. Yeah. And we can just tap it a little bit and that will kind of fill in a little. So why don't you tap it first okay. and see how far we get. A little bit more than that. Don't be afraid. Harder. There you go. Okay, we still need just a teeny bit okay. in the base. All so right. just put in a little uh -huh. tiny bit in the base. You're trusting me. I must be stepping up. I'm trusting you. You're doing great. Perfect. Whoops. Uh-oh. I messed up. I tapped it too hard, so you just wipe that off with your finger and that little bit will break off. Easy. Okay, now you're going to put a stick in, okay. and a lot of people put the stick in first mm -hmm. and then fill the molds. The problem with that is it doesn't work very well because it uh, won't adhere as well. Oh. So the trick to doing these is put it in and turn it three times. One, two, three, 
And then lay the stick down. So the chocolate's wrapped around the stick. Yes, and so it seems to stick a whole lot better. Okay. I don't know why, but it does. So let's make a chocolate one too. Okay. So you can do it on this side or right next to it, it doesn't matter. All right. So spoon that in and then you're gonna put the stick in. Okay. I'm sorry these spoons are in your way. No problem. So this is what you meant when you said if you choose Okay, so now just like you just showed me, I stick it in. Put the stick in yeah, at an angle. Three times. One, two, three, and then lay the stick down. Okay. And then we're gonna pop that in the freezer. These will take about 10 minutes probably. A little bit thicker, takes a little yeah, bit more time. Bit thicker. And then um, we'll dust those. Okay. You can you can not dust if you don't want, but it looks a lot fancier. I'm liking dust. the dust. Girls love sparkly yeah. things. Right. Beautiful. Okay, and here's our finished Oreos. Very yeah, nice. beautiful they look. And if you get a little bit of what they call strings down here, they just break right off. Perfect. So then you're gonna put them in papers. Great for graduation. Mm -hmm. Little Hawaiian hibiscus flowers. So this is really just projects that you know even the most <laughs> novice of bakers can do. Right. So now if you just take those, pick them up, mm -hmm. and put them in. Um, the little papers. Oh, professional. They look oh papers. so professional. Oh, break a little. There's a little, yeah, break that off. Voila. See? Doesn't that look cute? Okay. Now we left these in a little too long so they have cracks, but they'll still be fine. I'll you can still them. eat them. And they will taste just delicious. Yeah. I'll be able to fool lots of people with my newfound skills. That's right. Very nice. Just putting these Oreos back in, making them look nice. This is such a great idea, especially for women that already have a knack for cooking. They can look into you know, different businesses they'll be able to use their newfound skills with or different steps into creating their own. Do you have any advice for any confectionery entrepreneurs? Yes. If you do want to start selling things like this, um, you must have a health permit and you must have a kitchen where you can do it, a commercial kitchen. You're not allowed to do food from your home, um, so you have to rent a kitchen. There are many kitchens for rent that you can rent by the hour, and so it's not a fortune for you. Okay. Most of them are $17 uh, to $20 an hour, mm -hmm. and um, you can make all your stuff there. You do have to generally uh, bring your stuff back and forth, which is kind of a pain, but it's a good way to get started. Just a good starter. Yeah. So you do have to have a business license, a health permit, and rent a kitchen somewhere. Okay. But you can um, sell these then at uh, the fairs, uh, what do you call those? Like the San Diego County Fair or craft shows? No, no, shows. no. The farmer's market things. Oh, okay. Where they have a lot of vendors. Yes. So you could definitely sell them at that. So these are fine, all done. And in a couple of minutes, our champagne glasses will be done and we'll take those out and dust them. Perfect. So while we're waiting for our bubbly champagne uh, popsicles, this is Cassandra with the Talk of San Diego. As a courtesy to others, while attending a live taping of the Talk of San Diego, please refrain from bringing crying babies or weapons of any sort with. Hey, and we're back. This is Cassandra with the Talk of San Diego, and I am looking over some really, really cool works of art, and it's made of sugar, chocolate. I'm amazed. Run through what some of this stuff is. Okay, this um, mm -hmm. cupcake here is actually made with chocolate. I'm sorry, sugar. It's hollow, it looks like chocolate, but it's not. That's it's hollow cool. inside, and that has that disco dust that we used on it, which is why it's so shiny. Um, it's the butterfly arrangement over here is also made with a type of sugar. We actually have something now called isomalt sticks, and you just melt them in the microwave and put them in molds and form them. Now, what I did with the little um, purple, they're supposed to be uh, backgrounds, um, they're actually leaves, and I just kind of bent them before they set up completely. And we made the base by pouring the chocolate and mixing it together, just like we did the chocolate shells. That's lovely. So all of that stuff is edible. Um, these little sea creatures are made with fondant. We have a class where we teach that. And here's some more of the sea creatures that we do over here. That's amazing. That's all edible. This is all fondant. And this has a lot of the disco dust on it as well. I can see why kids would love taking classes here. Yeah, they and they are easy to do. These little elephants and teddy bear, these are made with modeling chocolate. That's something you see on TV a lot. 
that they cover the cake with it, but you can do other things as well. And then um, we have classes where we teach cookie making. This one is covered with fondant. You can also cover them with royal icing. And then the little logo on here, which is, this is a year old, so it's getting kind of beat up, but it's done on the edible printer. The same thing with this picture here was done on an edible printer. Is that like, you know, that's the rice paper they can put over it? It's not actually rice paper, it's actually called a frosting sheet. Oh. But a lot of people call it rice paper. And then this is back to our popcorn that we made, the butterscotch popcorn. You can also do them for Halloween and put little um, candy corn in here for fingernails and have a whole bowl of creepy hands. So this is one of the things we did on the uh -huh. uh, Food Network TV show because we did a Halloween special. Oh, how fun. So uh, there are all kinds of things you can do. There's no limit to what you can do. Yeah, the creativity is just astounding. I love These little things, I don't know if you can see them very well, but they look like marzipan and they're fashioned after marzipan, but they're actually butter cookies. Really? So you just do them the same way as marzipan and you chill them. The secret is you make just a basic butter cookie recipe, shape them, chill them for 30 minutes, and then bake them at 300 for about 20 minutes. And they retain that perfect shape. And they'll, they'll keep the shape. They flatten just a little bit, but they keep the shape pretty well. I'm astounded and inspired. <laughs> so there's all kinds of fun things that are all easy. We try not to teach anything too difficult that you have to buy a lot of special equipment. Um, the little goldfish over there, that's why I as well. So you can really just be very creative with yeah. any ideas you have. All kinds of things. Wow, they make you very popular with your family and friends. I can see that for sure. Right. Absolutely beautiful. So it looks like our champagne suckers are ready and ready to be popped out. Okay, you don't pop them out. You okay. just lift up with a stick. So grab the stick. Okay. And lift up. And there they are. Hello. Come right out. Ta-da. Perfect little champagne glasses. Okay, so we're going to put these down on wax paper. Okay. And if they, if they did get a little bit messy, you can just usually break that right off with your fingers. Okay. Um, because it's so thin. Clean it up a little bit. Yeah. Clean it up just a little bit. And then we're going to have you dust these again. And we'll dust the dark mm -hmm. with gold. Okay. And we'll dust the white with super pearl again. Mm -hmm. So here's your lid. Thank you. You already knew we were missing something. I remember. Okay, so we just dust it on. Yeah. Don't be afraid. Now they don't like to be dusted as much when they first come out. Mm -hmm. It's better to let them sit for about ten minutes. Okay. So it won't it won't be as smooth as it will be if you let them sit for a while. Okay. But it's good enough. Very pretty. Nothing wrong with it. Very nice. Very champagne color champagne flip. Okay, I'll do this one in the super pearl. Okay. Let's see how pretty that looks. So you suddenly have Ooh. more of a mm -hmm. champagne looking yes. uh, glass because you have that pearly finish to it. You can picture these at weddings. Champagne with champagne mm -hmm. suckers. And you could, if you really wanted to be creative, take some modeling chocolate and make like a little olive sticking out of the top. Ah, or you turn it into you martini have to attach glasses. It to that, right? You turn it into a martini glass. Put the little olive on mm -hmm. top. Stick it on with a little yeah. chocolate. Now you're speaking and my language. Really cute. That is so you can okay. just be so great. So they're all with done. These. And then we have bags to put them in. You can wrap them with all kinds of ribbon. Okay. And if this little piece here bothers you, mm -hmm. you can break that off as well, or you can break it like <laughs> I did. If you're gonna break it off. You want to be careful, you yep. want to put it down okay. and use a knife to break it off. Okay. And you won't have this happen. These are beautiful. But good to know, you got to be careful because it will break. Okay. Um, so we're learning the ins and outs right. of working with candy. It's not always perfect, but there's always a solution. Delicious. Just what I can do with this now is either eat it or put it back in and melt it. And again. we melt it? Even though it has the luster dust, there's such a tiny little bit, it won't hurt. You won't even notice. Okay. Right. Very nice. Okay. So. All right, so we're going to gather up all of the delicious things that we've made today and just see the fruits of our labor. This is Cassandra with the Talk of San Diego. If you've not already received your tickets to the live taping of the Talk of San Diego, I would blame the interns. Hey, we're back. This is Cassandra with the Talk of San Diego, and we are at Do It With Icing. Now, Linda Bills here has been so kind to show me some quick, easy, delicious, beautiful, amazing 
every other word you can describe, confections to make with chocolate, and here are the fruits of our labors. So just kind of a quick recap of all of the great things that we made today. What do we have here? Now these the ones were the cashew clusters. The cashew clusters. The Oreo mm. chocolate dipped chocolate Oreos. Chocolate covered Oreos. Then we made some of the chocolate seashells with the different kinds of luster dust, and you showed us right. how to paint those. And, and my personal favorite, the champagne suckers. This is just beautiful. So to find more examples of some of the work that you teach and some of the things that you've done, where should our viewers go? On our Facebook page, okay. Do It With Icing. Um, and we also have uh, our web page mm -hmm. that you can look at the schedule of classes on. And we have a few pictures of the store on there so you kind of get an idea of what's going on in the store. Awesome. So you can go to Facebook page, facebook.com slash do it with icing. You can go to do it with icing.com and find out all of the great classes so you yourself can make your life a little bit sweeter. Mmm. So good. So this is Cassandra, the talk of San Diego. I will see you next time. Hey, so I had so much fun here at Do With Icing, and I got a box of swag to bring home too. Not half bad if I say so myself. I've got that butterscotch popcorn we made, the chocolate covered Oreos, the luster dust seashells, and the cashew clusters. Yum, cannot wait. So not only here at Do It With Icing do they have a lot of great tools for you to learn how to make your own confections and to decorate them, they also host a really great philanthropic group called the San Diego Cake, cake Club. What they do here is they make cake they meet once a month and then they put on cake shows so the proceeds can go benefit the Ronald McDonald House and the Muscular Dystrophy Association. That, I think, is the sweetest thing they've done all day here so far. Now, I've had such a great time and if you want to learn more about the classes or just more about Do It With Icing, visit doitwithicing.com or Facebook page, facebook.com slash doitwithicing. And of course, I'm Cassandra with The Talk of San Diego. Check me out at thetalkofsandiego.com and I look forward to seeing you next time. 